Good morning, everybody. Man, is it a dreary morning here, middle of December. Yeah, it's one of those wintry type days in which it doesn't know what it wants to do. Rain, snow, sunshine. No, definitely out, definitely out. But, hey, we are moving up to the fourth Sunday in Advent. And maybe it, it the weather is kind of... Um, pointing the way toward our psalm that we have appointed for this coming up Sunday. I'd like to read just the first part of it. It's Psalm 89, and what's in our lectionary is only parts of this. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. So keep all that in mind. All right? Keep that 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 praise to God for his hesed, his steadfast love. Now here's the second part to keep in mind. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. So now what we have is the basis, the groundwork for the entire Psalm 89. Number one, that God's love, his steadfast love for us, his hesed, is going to be there. And number two, he has established a covenant with David that it's his descendants, his descendants will rule forever. Well, now we get into the good stuff. This psalm, it's quite a lengthy one, is classified as one of the royal psalms that we have. Basically, they they centered around an event of the of the king, whatever that event may have been, good or bad, and this is what the people would sing as the king was going through whatever he was going through, all right? Well, now keep in mind that the Psalms really came into use after the people's exile in Babylon. So now they've been through all the bad stuff and there is no more king. The king is gone forever. There's, there's no more line of David. Well, there's a line of David, but not sitting on any throne the people are under the domination of other nations, whoever that may end up being, whether it's the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians. I mean, you you got it all in there. Even a little, little time there, it was the Egyptians again. So why are we dealing with this psalm? Well, for Advent, we're looking at the first part right here, which is like an introductory section as I said, that sets the tone for the whole psalm. But we're also looking at another part. The, the rest of the psalm is divided into three main parts. Uh, the first chunk of it deals with creation and how Yahweh is the Lord of all creation, how he's, he's conquered the chaos of this creation. And this is where you really need a good study Bible because it starts bringing up different names and stuff in there that are like, what's all this about? Who Who is this? this Rahab creature that, you know, is raging away and creation that, that Yahweh has come and conquered. There were a lot of other religions, remember, that surrounded this territory that the people were well aware of and we don't know anything about or very little about now. But this was one of their creation stories that would, would have been very familiar to the people of Israel. And basically, the psalmist is saying, yep, Yahweh's taking care of that, too. You know, whatever is out there, Yahweh is in control. So you have, and it's beautiful poetry, but it's got some imagery in there that we don't always understand. So have, that's the first part. The second part um, of the psalm moves into the covenantal relationship that God now has established with the Davidic line, the Davidic monarchy. And then the last part is a full-blown lament, basically saying, what happened? <laughs> Why is this 
why is it such a mess out there now? What's happened to the the line of David in the Davidic monarchy? It's it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. It is a lament, a psalm of lament, and and that's the way that it ends up um, being. So. What we've done for the fourth Sunday in Advent, we just focus on the good stuff. God's hesed, his loving kindness, his steadfast love toward us. The promise made that the Davidic line would be established forever. Okay, we on that and then going into the promise of that Davidic line and how even in the midst of things that might be going wrong, Whoever is in charge can say this. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Now, even though we don't do the rest of the psalm, and it's long, it's 52 verses long. That's why we don't do it. It just kind of goes on almost forever. But what would be good is to go back and read the entire psalm. Read it with all these things that I just talked about in mind how things can go terribly wrong and think about the world that we often live in whether it's what's happening around us right now or other times in your life where things have just seem to have fallen apart you know why is this happening god didn't you make promises to me that you would always be with me you would never leave me forsake me you know the the footprints in the sand type of poem that we often recite to one another well, it all still holds true. God is there for us. God is showing his constant love and steadfast love. We just have a hard time seeing it sometimes. And there are those moments when we think he has abandoned us. That's what this psalm finally um, leads into. Why have you left us after you made these promises? Well, the truth is, God holds fast to his promises. He will be there for us. He is there for you and for me in the midst of whatever troubles we might be going through. So it is a good psalm for this Sunday that's coming up. It's a good psalm for our lives. Well, get the rest of your Christmas baking done now because, you know, Saint Nick is coming and he wants that milk and cookies right there on that table. God's blessings be with you. Have a great day.